times Jonah is, is spoken about in reference to Jonah being swallowed by the whale, by the fish, right? And oftentimes we, 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 we focus on that aspect of the book of Jonah. But there's more to the book of Jonah than, uh, than that one incident on the ship. And for that reason tonight, I want to talk to you about the fierce urgency of now to pray. Hmm. Prayer is essential. Prayer is necessary. In fact, I doubt that you can be a true Christian. In fact, I doubt, let me rephrase, I doubt that you can say you're a Christian and don't pray. Right. It's necessary to pray. But before we, we, we step into the book of Jonah, it, it's, it's important for us to to take a look at our current situation, our current um, state, and just walk walk with me as I, as I take you through um, just a few um, decades back in history, in American history to be specific. And in America during the 1950s and 60s, segregation was a very big problem, and it was even a, it was even legalized because of Jim Crow laws, yeah. laws that held separate but equal principles. But really, this was not the case. The, the, the laws tend to tend to lead to poverty, and, and 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 there were employment issues, and there were issues where blacks were being mistreated. And there was a time in, in, in history, not too far ago, just about 60 years ago, that the, the, the America that we know was very segregated. But there came this Baptist minister called Martin Luther King Jr. And he thought, he thought that it was necessary for him to, to play a vital role in civil, in civil um, matters, equal rights and justice. It wasn't about preaching the gospel and saying that Jesus loves you and Jesus cares for you. But he believed that what was important was that people were treated fairly. It didn't matter what color you were, whether you were black, you were white. It, did, it didn't matter. What mattered was that we were all interconnected by God. And one incident that led to, to Martin Luther being, uh, MLK being arrested, it, he found himself in the Birmingham jail. And there were a set of, of, of pastors and politicians who had the audacity to write to, to MLK and said to him that you should, you, should, you should perhaps calm down. You should perhaps not be so aggressive about about our fight for civil rights. But Martin Luther King, while he was sitting in the Birmingham jail, he wrote this letter and he wrote, he wrote this letter and he told them that, he said to them, quote unquote, he says that we have all we have also come to this other spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of no. He said that this is no time to engage in a luxury of cooling off or taking the tranquilizing drug of Gradualism. In fact, what he was saying was that we cannot sit here and see our country, see our people get um, uh, discriminated against and see us, uh, see our people being um, uh, uh, victimized every day. But what was important was that we were all seen on an equal playing, uh, uh, playing field. Everyone was equal. It wasn't a situation where we were, we were black and you were white and we were separate, but we were equal. It was saying that if you can drink from this water fountain, then I can drink from it. It doesn't matter what color my skin is, but there needs to be a fierce urgency of now. Yeah. You cannot sit and wait for things to happen. You have to be proactive. You have to be, you, you, you have to be uh, um, determined and intentional about what needs to be done now. And he says that in order for us to experience this change, we have to step out by faith now and we have to we have to let our voices be heard so what does this have to do with the church we take a look at the book of, of, of Jonah and we see a situation where where, where Jonah oftentimes we, it, it, we talk as I said we, we, we talk about the, the miracle of Jonah being being kept alive in, in, in the fish's stomach but what is interesting about the book of Jonah was that here it is that God is showing us his transcendence across um, uh, 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 religious boundaries, political boundaries, geographical boundaries. And here it is that the, the, the Ninevites, they were, they were not a Christian nation. In fact, they were not a nation that believed in, in, in Jehovah God. But God said 
that this nation is a wicked nation and they yeah. need to be, they need to be, they need to be um, called out. There will be judgment upon them. But he says that what is going to happen is that Jonah, I'm going to give you a chance to talk to them. And here it is that, that, that Jonah found himself in a position where he's so passionate about oh, Jehovah God, the God of, of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, the God that cares so much for us that he didn't think that, that, that God loves to transcend even those people that God saw as evil. But here it is that, that God's message to us is that it's not the, the, it's, it doesn't matter what condition you find yourself in. It doesn't matter how messy you are. It, you can still be changed. That's right. Yeah. So we have to see ourselves in, in, in a reflection of, uh, of the people of Nineveh. They, they were messed up. The Bible says that they were an evil city. They were a city that was, was condemned. And it says that there were a large city, just about 120,000 people. And they were going to be killed because there was, there, there was none righteous among them. But God says, I'm giving you a chance so that you can be saved. So Jonah, go for it and speak to them. And here we are tonight. There's an urgency of now. There's a fierce urgency for us to speak to the community in which we live in. I don't know what you're going through all you, but I know that in Springfield there's some stuff that needs to be, 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 be killed. Or right. it, it needs to be nipped in the bud because it's, it's going against the principles of God. It's going right. against the principles of the church. And it needs to be stopped. And we have to go out and cry out for, for, for this, the cities that we live in. And here we are wearing holy oak and we should see ourselves as Jonah going out to reach the community. Yeah. It's not that we're, we should see ourselves alone in, joy, in, 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 in Jonah's reflection, but we should see ourselves in, in Nineveh's, Nineveh's reflection that even though we are a messed up people, even though we may not be living a right, here comes the time we need to cry out to God. judgment. But here it is, that the, the Bible says that when they heard the message of God, that they were going to be condemned. The Bible says that they realized that there's a fierce urgency of now, even though I'm messed up, even though my situation is not, is not good, even though my finances are, are not the best, even though my family is segregated, even though my church people don't seem to like me, even though the storms are rising against me. But God, But the Bible also says that the Bible, right. let us look at the text. The Bible doesn't say that God told them to pray. The Bible says that, 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 that God said that there would be judgment upon them. But they realized that the God of Jonah was a God that listened to prayer. He was a God that was, 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 was just sitting there with arms open and wide for us to, to confess our sins. And, and, and I believe that they may have, they may have heard the, the scriptures where it says that if my people were called by my name, and they, were, they must have been thinking and saying that, that, that just as all God will hear his people, then perhaps God may hear us, so let us just pray. What is it going to do if I pray? It, it doesn't hurt if I pray. But the Bible says that they prayed. From the youngest to the oldest, even the king declared that we ought to pray. And whatever your leadership is saying, you have to listen.